Welcome back to Houston Life. Right now, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Visionaries of the Year campaign is fully underway. It's a campaign about awareness, finding a cure, and healing. And our next guests have a very personal connection to the mission. Lindsay Yates, an LLS All-Star candidate, her 10-year-old son Logan, who is a cancer survivor himself, and also LLS board member Lauren Payne, who nominated Lindsay this year. So much to chat about. Uh, welcome to all three of you. It's great to see you. Thank you, guys. Logan, it's you're 10 years here. old? Yeah. How are you feeling these days? Uh, good. You good? In remission for what, four years or so? Uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to hear more about your story and your journey and, Lindsay, how you got involved with all of this, because I know it's a lot yes. putting your story out there. Yes. Lauren, uh, chat with us about how this campaign came to be and why you decided to nominate Lindsay this year. Oh, my goodness. Well, Lindsay, I can 100% confirm that she is, in fact, an all-star in real life. Um, but for if you aren't familiar, the listeners or you all, Derek and Tessa, and first of all, such a huge fan and so honored to be here. Oh my gosh. Um, and really honored to get to be here to represent the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and also to support my dear friend Lindsay and her son Logan. Um, but the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, also known as LLS, for those of you who might not know, is a um, worldwide leader in fighting blood cancer and providing support and education um, for people fighting blood cancer and also their caregivers and physicians and doctors around the world. Um, and since it was founded in 1949, um, LLS has invested $1.7 billion wow. in fighting blood cancer and is virtually a part of every single breaking, groundbreaking treatment um, that the FDA has approved. So really saving lives and putting those dollars into incredible use. Incredible indeed. Um, a huge amount. It really is. So I'm honored to get to be a part of the Board of Trustees. I ran for the Visionary of the Year mm -hmm. in 2020 and I did so in honor of a client and a dear friend who was a survivor because I wanted to carry on her legacy of hope and provide that hope for other people. Um, so fast forward, I met Lindsay a year yeah. ago, just over a year ago through mutual friends and as soon as I met her I knew that she was very special. And um, we went on our first friend date about a year ago, and I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to hear her story um, of, I mean, this woman is a warrior woman, and so is this young man right here. Um, and she had told me that she had done this campaign mm -hmm. back in 2015, so almost 10 years ago. And when I heard the rest of her story and everything that had transpired in the last 10 years, I told her, I said, you have got to do this campaign for a second time because the world needs to hear the rest of the story oh, wow. because it's one of victory and of hope. And so I am so honored and thrilled to get to have nominated her, that she accepted, and then to be here today to support her. Well, Thank Lindsay, you. that is, I mean, that's huge to even be nominated, but yes. to accept it means you have to kind of be vulnerable and share, and share your story. Take us yes. through that journey. Oh my goodness. So in 2015 was the first time that I ran and I did it in honor of my dad. So my dad lost his life to cancer in 2008, my uncle in 2012, and then another woman, I'm sorry, I will already get emotional, um, who was very much like a mother to me, also in 2012. Oh. And so by the time that 2015 came around and I had a dear friend who ran the year before me, she had mentioned that she would like to nominate me and I was like, absolutely, like I have to do it. So I threw myself into the 10 weeks and it was, it was a grind and it was amazing. By the end, when you are at the gala, when you're at the finale, there is nothing like seeing all of these candidates come together and absolutely shine and just get to share that number that they raised. I mean, it is a, it's a story of celebration, it's victory. Every candidate had grit and hope and passion for what they did. So yes, it's an honor and yes, I hope that, you know, not only did I get to celebrate my father in that process, but when Lauren asked me to run again. It was a little more personal mm -hmm. because in 2018, this little guy <laughs> at just four years old was diagnosed and we went on a two year battle. Oh. And every step of the way, I knew we were gonna beat it. I just knew. And I can't even imagine, Lindsay, after losing your father, we're seeing some photos right now of you with little Logan. Logan, I, I'm guessing you don't remember a, a lot of these situations because you were so young at the time, but it, it must have been a really, I, I can't even imagine what you were feeling at the time. And after going into remission and having Logan do well, was there 
any reservation on your part to continue telling this story and putting your personal story out into the public light? I think for me, it is very difficult to share. I am one who likes to kind of keep stuff. I've just kind of always been a natural one. Like you put your head down, you do the work and you, you grind and you go through it. So telling his story was certainly more difficult this time around, but my hope and why this guy's here with me today is that he gets to see how powerful his story is and just how many lives he can actually change by sharing his story, not right. being ashamed of it, being so proud of the journey that he went on, that he fought through, that he won. Yeah. And so I said, you know what? Yes, this journey and this mission is so impactful, but I think for me at the end of the day, it's showing him that we can sit up here and be proud of the fights that we take on yeah. and the journeys that we take. The things that you maybe were embarrassed to share or what actually make you so strong. Logan, what grade are you in? 10 years old, what grade is that? Fourth. Fourth grade. When you look back at those pictures, I mean, are you proud of yourself? How do you feel? I know you're proud of your mom because as soon as she popped up on screen, you pointed, you're like, hey, <laughs> there she is. But how, how does it make you feel? Oh, uh, well, like, it makes me feel good that I beat it, yeah, but. I'm just happy that it's over. Absolutely. We <laughs> yes, are too. Yes, we are too. Everybody, all, of us. all of us. Well, I think it's incredible that y'all uh, stop by yeah. to tell your stories. Good luck with the campaign. We'll keep tabs on you. Yeah, Thanks absolutely. And I think at the end of the day, I think Logan had a final message he wanted to say. Well, uh, thank you for donating to my mom's, uh, to my mom's fundraiser because it's helping save kids' lives just like me and like, you're like saving kids' lives, like if you donate. And yeah. for the people that did donate, thank you so much. Okay, that's life changing. Wonderful. We gotta leave it Lovely. there. Lindsay Yates, Logan, Lauren Payne. Thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by. And in thank the meantime, you. we do have a link to learn more about Lindsay's campaign on our website, HoustonLife.tv. You know the drill. Just look for that scene on Houston Life section. Okay.